Hi and welcome to the programming with R and MATLAB. My name is Jan and I'm teaching assistant and finance section at Stockholm Business School. The main idea of this course is to give you an intuition and logic of programming in R and MATLAB. And here R and MATLAB are more look like example of programming a scripting languages. It's not a full manual. So by this I mean I'm not going to show how each and every function in R or MATLAB works and how you can apply it. The idea of this course is to give you a logic how you can take some different building blocks, uh, functions or whatever it is, and put them together. Because using functions like regress, sort, gorge is actually quite easy and straightforward. Y if you do not know, for example, how to write, how to make a regression, you can just take a look at manual, press F1 and you have the full document, uh, full help, how you can put in variables and uh, have the result. The idea and the, what is challenging is how to adjust and these functions into a framework, how to make them work together and give you the result you actually want. This is challenging. And why it is challenging? Because most of the people, at least whom I met, they usually try to think in the way of functions. They try to think, okay, which function shall I use? It's not, it's right, but it's not completely right. You first, you need to think over what you want to do. It's like a puzzle. You are not concentrating on one just piece of puzzle. You try to concentrate on the whole picture because the whole picture is what you want to get. And the idea of this course is that after after passing or after listening to all the videos, you should be able to get the whole picture and the whole puzzle set up. About the course structure, the course structure is going to be one big example. The reason for this is that I wanted to show, I wanted first to make it fun as much as you can be and uh, I wanted also to be not just um, boring stuff which you would maybe learn once and never use. I wanted to show that these things are actually quite important for you and they can help you if not in your studies but in leveraging yourself on your CV and it may actually help you in work and help you to do your tasks in much efficient way. And the course is divided into three parts. The basics, the, in these basics I'm not talking about programming as is. It's universal for R and MATLAB. I'm talking about our example and how you should address the issue from the perspective of getting the whole picture set up before you start coding. Then I'm going to do it to show how these basics is imp are implemented in MATLAB and R. So pretty much if you are if you want to learn just MATLAB you can you can watch basic section and coding in MATLAB se section and you would be good. The same if you want to code in R, basics and coding in R. Because coding in MATLAB and coding in R, they're complete substitutes. It's going to be this absolutely the same information, but in different languages. However, the most important is that you watch basics. Because in basics we're going to speak why we're going to do it in this way and not in another one. In MATLAB we're just going to write it in the machine language, pretty much. So, the example, we're going to make a stock picking robot and see how it worked during the last 10 years. Well, stock picking robot, I think it's a pretty fancy name. It's going to be a stock picking algorithm which will form you a portfolio from all this, from some of the assets you're going to have. So pretty much what you want to do is press the button, then some magic is going to be done by our algorithm and at the end we will have the list of the stocks to invest in. And now, so what's the strategy? Uh, I think 
because the idea of this course is still not to learn how to write robots or how to do the algorithms it's more about how to code and how to address a problem with the tools you have with computer tools this is why the strategy will be simple and easy no transaction costs only loan positions will be allowed so that it means you can only buy and sell for your own funds so you buy for example stocks let's say Sandvik and then you sell Sandvik then we're going to use moving average strategy I'm going to tell what is it in next slides and though we're going to scan shares on the Stockholm Stock Exchange and we're going to have I think it's more than 250 shares of from Stockholm Stock Exchange which you can download from data stream uh, you can cl you can press on the link link in the right bottom e to see how you can do it uh, but let's say let's make it as easy as possible and say we can only include 10 stocks out of all of these in our portfolio so it doesn't matter let's say our moving average strategy will say that we can invest in 50 stocks but we can include only 10 so we have to find our way out how we're going to refine them and but the portfolio will be equally weighted so it means we invest equal equal portion of our funds in each uh, stock we're going to purchase so the moving average strategy here you can see the index all makes uh, 30 Stockholm 30 and uh, MA it's going to be a short like, kind of uh, short way to write a moving average uh, so the average and this is calculated as an average of the closing prices well in our example we're going to use 50 days but uh, if you're going to do it in a 50 the 90 the difference between 90 days and 50 days is that 90 days is more smoother 50 days is a little bit more volatile so it will give us more signals to buy and sell and it is uh, moving average is a red line on the graph so the idea of the strategy is that if your current price crosses over the av the moving average from the bottom to up and you can see it with the green circle then you have to buy if the price crosses it from bottom to down uh, or from up to down excuse me then you have to sell and it is a red arrow and but as I told there may be a lot of signals there may be let's say hundred stocks which were proven to have a signal that we have to buy them but we can include only 10 stocks so we are going to apply sharp ratio filtering and uh, what we're going to do we're going to find such stocks whose sharp ratio at specific point of time is bigger than the market sharp ratio the, but let's say it helped us to get rid of the half of the stocks and we have 50 stocks left then we're going to rank all the stocks based on their trainer measure uh, I will elaborate more on the sharp ratio and trainer measure uh, later in the course so just this is uh, this other ratio which uh, can specify the performance of the stock if you don't know or forget about what they are and then we will select the top 10 stocks based on their trainer measure this is it for the introduction please press here to play next video otherwise have a nice day hey though